This opening sequence of my Miss Chinatown USA recap video took me almost two hours to edit because I didn't know what I was doing. Now that I've had time to figure it out, I'm going to show you how to do it way faster than that. First, you're going to choose a clip you want to work with. I recommend not letting your clip run longer than about 10 seconds so your viewers won't be waiting too long trying to understand what you're doing. This works well with the video that I have from the Lunar New Year Parade because I wanted it to stop right before you can hear the announcements on the loudspeakers. Next, have your playhead where you want to have the pause effect. Right-click the clip and choose Insert Frame Hold Segment. Now, if you leave it like this, it'll stop the video at the correct part for less than a second, and then still play everything you didn't want after that. To fix this, delete everything to the right of the frame hold, then drag out your frame hold so that it's long enough to run the effect. Unfortunately, the effects we're going to be using don't work on these frame hold segments, so we're going to save this part as its own video and add it back in. Go to the beginning of the section, go to the second button underneath your program window that kind of looks like one of those brackets you added next to the bullet points in your college class notes and click to mark in. Go to the end of the section and click the mark out button right next to the first one. Open the export window by going to file export or toggle to export in the top left corner. Here, choose where you want to save your video and next to range, change this from entire source to source in and out. This is why we were marking our video earlier so you can tell Premiere Pro what part of your workflow you want to save, if not the entire thing. Once it's done exporting, import the video into your library and drag it over the original frame hold segment. To make it look like someone's pausing the video, move the playhead to the beginning of the frame hold if it isn't already there. Select the rectangle tool and drag to create one that covers the entire frame. Change the color to white and set the opacity to about 40%. Next, find a generic pause symbol a PNG so that you can see the video underneath it, and drag it onto the video. Size it to your liking and center it to the frame instantly with the Align tools in the Essential Graphics panel. Now you could just have the pause button appear where you want and not do anything else to it, but you can also spruce it up just a little bit by having it disappear for a frame or two before reappearing again. You can achieve this either by having one graphic span the whole length of the effect and using the razor tool to make two cuts next to each other and deleting the unwanted portion, or you can start with a super short version of the clip using option and drag to duplicate it a few frames later and dragging out the length of the duplicated clip. Once you're done with that, add a clicking sound effect right at the same time as the pause simple and white box. There are plenty of free sound samples out there to download. Pixabay is one of my go-tos for music and sound effects. I like the way this one sounds. It's kind of like a double click and fits perfectly with the way I've edited the pause button. The glitch effect I think is one of the coolest parts of the effect. To get the look, make sure you have your original clip selected. Take the razor tool and make a cut where you want the effect to start. In the effects panel, type glitch and once you see VR digital glitch appear, click and drag that onto the clip to the right of where you have just made your cut. Move your playhead to the beginning of the clip if it isn't there already, and click on the stopwatch next to Master Amplitude to create a keyframe. Shout out to those of you who are still struggling with getting the hang of keyframes because yours truly was always messing up and having to go back and look for mysterious keyframes that I didn't even know that I added that were messing up my flow. Trust me, it gets better. Anyway, change the number here to zero because we want the effect to basically be invisible at the beginning. Hit the right arrow key on your keyboard three times to move the playhead three frames forward. Here the amplitude is going to be 100, which is telling the program to give it the maximum effect at this point in the clip. Move the playhead three frames forward again and set it back to zero. If your clip is fitted to the frame, you'll want to scale it up for this next part. Create a keyframe for the position effect, move the playhead one frame forward, and move the position of the video ever so slightly in any direction you want, either by clicking and dragging the horizontal and vertical values left and right and up and down respectively, or clicking on position and moving the video in your main panel. Move forward another keyframe and click this refresh looking button to reset the video back to its original position. And move forward another keyframe and move it a little bit more, preferably in a different position so it doesn't look like it's just moving back and forth. TV glitches have a randomness to them, so that's what we want to go for. Move forward one more keyframe and move it back to its original position. In my video, I copied the series of keyframes three more times and spaced them out slightly to extend the glitch effect. A few simple copy and paste commands can get you there. This is looking good. All that's left before the rewind effect starts is to add the glitch sound effect. This one's also from Pixabay and it's called TV Glitch 6245. 
And now for the worst, I mean best part of this edit, you're going to compile a library of folders with the images you want to use for your rewind sequence. You want to get more than you think you need because each one only plays for less than a second. Make a new bin in your media window and name it to something that'll help you remember that this is the folder with all your photos. Open the folder and add all your photos. They're all already highlighted because you added them at the same time, so go ahead and click and drag them onto the track. Decrease the length of all of the tracks so that they're only one frame long. This part's not particularly hard, it's just tedious. It doesn't matter if you use a razor tool to drag handles to do this, so just go to town. You don't have to be super precise, just make sure that one clip is not significantly longer than the others. Otherwise, it'll look like it's stopping at one of the photos and that your viewers will think you'll look like you're favoring someone. Which honestly... Hey yo, it's a joke. Once you have it how you like it, add your fast forward effect. This one's called Fast Forward 5980 by, you guessed it, Pixabay. And you're done. Let's watch the whole thing together. I kind of let everything go black for about two seconds before I start the next part of the recap video, so if you want to see what I did after that, head on over to the Miss Chinatown USA recap and behind the scenes video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.